Hello my friends, today we meet for a new tutorial, how to color this blue bee. I chose to make it in blue like a bee which exists really, the blue carpenter bee, the Xylocopa cerulea. But you can apply my technique with other colors of course. You can also make your bee in more conventional colors following the same gradient principle that I'll show you in this video. The original drawing comes from Flourish, the free mini book which is offered by Johanna Basford in free download. Here are the colors that I used to make the hair effect. I used the Faber Castell Polychromos. Why did I choose these pencils? Because the lead is quite hard and therefore it can be cut very sharp, which is important to make hair effect. Of course, if you don't have polychromos, there is no problem to make this effect with other brands of pencil. Especially take care that the lead is well sharpened. If you choose to make the bee rather in yellow tones, you can replace the blue shades by a gradient from yellow to orange, the dark blue by a rather warm brown, and the black, of course, you can use black, or a very dark brown, almost black. For the wings, I used other colors and I'll give you the combo when we'll get to this part. So here is the original drawing. I downsized it in half. How did I erase the flower on the bee? Well, quite simply, I converted the original PDF to JPEG and then I worked on the brightness. I brightened the drawing until we hardly see it anymore. Then I printed it in draft quality. And so here you can see that the drawing, we can hardly see it anymore. So we can make a hair effect on top without being annoyed by the flowers that I drawn on the drawing. I printed this coloring on this paper. It's Clairefontaine Claire Alpha 160 grams. It allows you to work with water and also with dry pencils like polychromos which have a particularly nice effect on this paper. I'll give you a link in the info box. To show you how I colored this bee, I will simply redo it for you on my new printed page and I'll explain each step of this coloring and how to make a realistic fur effect. Let's go! First, I will draw the black lines and the eyes. So this will be a guide for the shape and direction of the hairs. So for that, I take a graphite pencil. You see here, the eyes protrude slightly. So I use a little rule to make them very symmetrical. I start with a graphite pencil like that. So if I get wrong, it's easy to erase. Here, you make the eyes slightly protruding and with a shape like a drop shape, like this. And here we notice the flower that I'm going to draw in black. And there you see the edge. I'm also going to draw the end of the head here with a slightly triangular shape and with a little point in the middle. After the flower, we will mark the waist, which is at the narrowest point of the body. So I draw it here at the bee's legs. Here, below the flower, I make a black line. And I divide the back in half with a slightly curved line. So I do not make a straight line, I make a slightly curved one. And on the abdomen, I draw a large black band here. I take a mark on the flower, which are there, which are a little bit larger. And again, a little bit curved. I just add a slightly wider black band, which ends slightly in a point and I add a last black strip here. There, here are the black areas and the rest is the areas of blue fur. I lighten these lines with an eraser and with my black pencil, I draw the areas. I don't press hard because it's always annoying 
to have black in the start of a coloring. When you pass your hand on it, it will transfer to other areas. Now we'll use the white pencil to illuminate the areas of light. You see here that there are areas of light around the edges of the bee. We are drawing them first using the white pencil. The white pencil must be well sharpened. So if you have a pencil sharpener that allows you to choose the lead, you set it to be very sharp. You see here, for example, if I put the wheel against it, it is a lead that is not very sharp. And if I turn the wheel so that it is far away from the pencil sharpener, that will make a very sharp pencil. The polychromos allow to be cut very sharp without breaking, which is not the case of Prismacolor. If you are using a Prismacolor, don't turn your wheel to the end. Now it's okay, my pencil is very sharp. It's just a little bit too small, so I'm using a pencil extender. I use the thin part of the pencil extender. With my well-sharpened white pencil, I draw small hair in the light areas. So, I make an area of light here on the edge and another here on the edge with lighter hair. The same here. I'm going to make an area of light here, all the edge and the top. I drew small white hair that we don't see for the moment on the sheet. It's logical because it's white. I use a strong pressure because by pressing well the white pencil, you make small scratches in your page since your pencil is very sharp. And there, the other colors will hang less on the paper, so it will accentuate the fluffy effect and the fur effect. Here, even if there are the rings, I do the same. And I do that on all the edge. The hair must not be completely parallel, otherwise it doesn't make a natural effect. So you do them all in the same direction, but not completely parallel. So here, as you do the hair and you arrive on a darker area, you carry a little bit of black pigments on your pencil. So the ideal is to take a white sheet and after two or three hair, you rinse your pencil on the white sheet. And on this side, I decide that the light comes from the right. I use my white a little more inside the body of the bee. I put small white hair each time along the black bands and, importantly, well on the edge here of the bee. It's always easier to darken a picture than to lighten it, so that's why I start with the white. So that's it for the right. Now we go to the lightest color in the blue tones, which is a slightly turquoise blue. Like the white, I use it to give a bright reflection to Orbi. I'm going to do the head entirely, and then the entire first segment of the body here. So you can see the whole sequence. I advise you to work segment by segment. That will allow you to improve the technique as you go. I take the light cobalt turquoise and I apply it on the same places as the places where I added white. Once again, I have a very, very sharp pencil, really sharp. I slightly space the hair to make room for the other colors. And then I go down on the rest of the bee by adding small hair and respecting the direction of the hair. So here I go there, here I go there, to have the effect of rounding. I make very small hair, not too big, and again, not parallel hair, otherwise we lose the natural effect. The hair effect is really easy to do, the only thing you need is patience. 
you have to do things one by one and very gently. Then I take my second color and I add hair by omitting the areas of light on the edges. I do the same with my third color. Again, I resharpen my pencil before starting. I add hair everywhere except on the light area. I continue to sharpen my pencil very sharp and I move on to the next color which I apply more particularly in the shaded areas. So we have a light zone on the edge where there is only white and light cobalt turquoise. An intermediate zone where I put almost all my blues and then a shadow zone which I will accentuate. I use my darkest blue to accentuate the shadow area a little bit more and to add here and there a few small dots in the intermediate area. Then I take again one of the lightest blue to attenuate these small dots. And I go up very slightly in the area of light. I don't press my pencil hard. I take the light cobalt turquoise and I'm going to finish my light zone by slightly touching my intermediate area to make the junction. Now I take back the white and I brighten the light area once again by making a few small lines not too much because otherwise you'll blend the fur and you will no longer have a fur effect. Now to mark the edge of the bee, I take the cobalt turquoise. Why turquoise? It's to keep the same colors that I used on the edge. Here and there, I make a few tiny lines on the edge to mark the edge of the bee hair. The cobalt turquoise edge accentuates the fact that the edge is a little bit lighter. Then, depending on the result you have, you touch up. For example, here I add a little hair. I darken my shadow area a little bit and I'm going to enlarge it. And that's it for the head. I will do the same for the different segments. For the second segment, I consider this as a single one, so I won't mark the junction. I'll make the lighter area on the edge, here, and a little bit wider there, in a rounded shape, to have a light area here above, which will give a three-dimensional appearance. As I've already applied white in the light areas, 
I immediately switch to light cobalt turquoise. Then it's very simple. I go through the entire sequence from the lightest to the darkest and then I make a few small adjustments depending on the result I see on my sheet. Remember to re-sharpen your pencils regularly. I'm going to draw the flower here in black to be able to give the impression that it crushes the fur a little, that it is placed on the back of the bee. So it will determine the direction of my hair and that's why I draw the flower first, so I can see it. To make your hair, I'll show you on my white sheet, you don't make a line just like that. You press well on the beginning and presto, you release the pencil to have a line which is less and less pressed. You see, not like that, but like that. <laughs> I hope I'm clear. It's the juxtaposition of colors that will give a three-dimensional effect to your fur. Because even if it's not visible to the naked eye, there are slight variations in color between your different areas. Since you have overlapped colors, so that's why I say it's easy, but just it takes patience. You can make a fur effect with three colors if you want, but it will have less relief than if you do it with six colors as I do here. Here we are on a larger area, so I don't apply the cobalt blue everywhere. I space the hairs since the hairs are a little bit longer on the body than on the head where I really wanted an almost cottony appearance. So as you see here, we made our gradient and therefore we see very well the light area and the dark area. But if we leave the light area like that, we lose all the relief because there are only two colors on it. So we have to add darker hairs in it, but much more sparse to also give this impression of relief on the lighter area. For that, I don't take my darkest blue, otherwise it's gonna be too much contrast. I take the cobalt blue and I add a little bit of relief in the areas of light, but really just under a few hairs, not too much. Then I slightly blend these darker hairs with the lightest of my blues. And by doing this, I take the darkest pigments toward the light area. It goes by itself. Simply by always going from the inside to the outside with your pencil, you bring the pigments. I lightly mark the edges with my cobalt turquoise, only in certain places, two, three hairs here and there. Remember not to make them parallel. Now that I have made the fur, I can a little more mark the black areas.
and then you make alterations based on what you feel like. If you like this bead to be light like that, you leave it like that. I prefer a little more contrast, so I'm just going to play with the colors. Add a little bit of dark, add a little bit of light, until the effect suits me. With the white, regularly I rinse the lead on a sheet to always keep the mine very right and not bring the pigments on the light areas. Here you see what I told you with the black. We already have black hair that has drooled over the rest of my coloring. Most often when I have to use black I use markers, but here it's better with pencil because we want this black to be a little bit blurry. I'm going to continue the other segments with you, so remember I already applied the white pencil. If you haven't done it yet for each segment, you first add the white pencil on the light areas. And I'm just going to play the video in a light time lapse. So if you want to watch it real time, just go to the video settings, playback speed, you choose 0.25 and it will broadcast the image at wheel speed. During this time, I put you some songs from my friend Pierre Simon and I will take you back when I'll have finished to color the body of the bee. Then we'll make some small adjustments with Posca. See you then! Tu aimerais voir une expo, moi j'attends l'heure de l'apéro J'aimerais juste m'asseoir Écouter du silence, le regard en errance J'aimerais juste m'asseoir Jouir de ton absence ce soir Il est un peu tard pour ranger les armoires Pour parler de Rimbaud, pour Titanic Parler de ta mère pour t'avouer un adultère T'aimerais partir au bord de l'eau Moi j'attends l'heure de l'apéro J'aimerais juste m'asseoir Écouter du silence le regard en errance J'aimerais juste m'asseoir Jouir de ton absence ce soir Sans le moindre sanglot à l'heure de l'apéro J'irai pleurer chez ta mère Je dirai tout Rimbaud, tout Voltaire Mais tout en me tournant le dos Tu me diras ces quelques mots T'aimerais juste t'asseoir Écouter du silence de regard en errance T'aimerais juste t'asseoir Jouir de mon absence ce soir T'aimerais juste t'asseoir Écouter du silence le regard en errance T'aimerais juste t'asseoir Jouir de mon absence ce soir Tu 
Et parti ce matin, ne laissant en chemin qu'une lettre d'adieu. Une lettre c'est bien, mon amour néanmoins, une lettre c'est peu, c'est curieux. Comme tout change, comme nos défauts se mélangent. Si l'argent faisait mon bonheur, si j'aimais son boucan, si j'aimais son odeur, mais tout ça c'est du vent, c'est de la vapeur. J'ai perdu l'important. Quand j'ai perdu ton cœur, tu es parti ce matin, ne laissant en chemin qu'une larme d'adieu. Une larme c'est bien, mon amour néanmoins, une larme c'est peu, c'est curieux. Comme tout s'inverse, comment retourne nos restes Si l'argent faisait mon bonheur, si j'aimais son boucan, si j'aimais son odeur. Mais tout ça c'est du vent, c'est de la vapeur J'ai perdu l'important quand j'ai perdu ton cœur Tu es parti ce matin, me laissant en chemin à compter mes cheveux à confier au chien que je ne vois pas bien le plus radin de nous deux Sous tes yeux, je fais la manche Pour un peu d'amour, mon ange Si l'argent faisait mon bonheur Si j'aimais son boucan, si j'aimais son odeur Mais tout ça c'est du vent, c'est de la vapeur J'ai perdu l'important quand j'ai perdu ton cœur, si l'argent faisait mon bonheur, si l'argent faisait mon bonheur, si l'argent faisait mon bonheur, si l'argent. Dans l'armoire de ma chambre, bien cachée sous mes vêtements, se trouvait une boîte en fer enfermant des secrets troublants. Dans un silence religieux, je la sors de sa planque, mes mains tremblent un petit peu et le souffle me manque. Une lettre de rupture, une larme dans ma main 
Dans l'armoire de ma chambre Bien caché sous mes vêtements Je range ma vieille boîte en fer Tout en fredonnant So now we're going to finalize with Posca. I take the finest I have. It's the 1M, a 0.7 mm tip. I shake it well before starting and I'm going to accentuate certain areas with very fine needle hairs with Posca. So I advise you to practice on a small sheet of colored paper. You see, if I do like that, the line is too thick. You can practice to make the finest hair possible with your Posca. Once you have found the angle at which your hairs will be very fine, you use the Posca to add small fine hairs, especially which overlap the junction with the black bands. As with the hair we have drawn, you do not make them parallel. You make the lines slightly offset to give a natural effect. If some are too big, don't worry, I'll show you how to remove them afterwards. It's on the head that they must be the finest. So don't start with the head, start with the body so that you will have practiced well to make very fine hair before making the head. From time to time, rinse your Posca on a sheet of paper to check that the paint is still white. For those who are missed or too big, just take a pencil or your nail and rub them with the pencil of the color underneath. The Posca doesn't hold very well when you rub it with, with a sharp pencil. So when a line is too big, simply either I cover it or I just erase it with my pencil. Here they are a little too blatant, as you can see. So once they are dry, I attenuate them with the pencil of the color below. Here I'm going back with the light to cross over it. The lines of Posca will be tinted in light turquoise, but it will be lighter than the light turquoise which is below, and therefore it will add another shade to offer effect. Here I take a little bit of black for my line which went a little too far. I go back with some blue to mitigate the Posca effect.
we continue to adjust until the effect seems natural enough. We can also re-darken a little bit the shadow areas. This is it for the body of the bee and the fur effect. In the next part, we'll make the legs with a few small blue hair here. And we'll also make the hind legs. And I will show you how to make the wings to have a shiny effect. If we compare my second blue bee to the first, I think we have a relatively similar effect. It just appears a little bit lighter here. It's normal. By going back on the sheet and adding several layers, the colors fade somewhat. That's why when I have completely finished coloring, I always use a fixative spray. I use a basic one, which is a matte fixative for pencil, charcoal pastel. I buy it in an art supply store and it's the cheapest in stock. To color with pencil, there is no need to take the most expensive fixative you find. It's not like it was a painting that you were going to put on the wall and that was going to be exposed all day at daylight. All colorings remain in books, so you don't have to buy an expensive fixative spray. This one I think I paid 12 or 13 euros. It's a bottle of 400 milliliters and it lasts about a year. Thank you very much for following this video. I see you very soon to finish our blue bee. Until then, take care and have fun with your colored pencil. Happy colorings!